Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, July 18th, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 609. Just a little bit into the 600s. And of course, we have to bring on uh, one of our favorite guests, uh, Edward Angelini Cook. Well, who's right below me? Hi, <laughs> hi. Welcome I even asked back. what position he wanted to be in, and he's, he he said uh, bottom left would be perfect. Oh. Not in those mm-hmm. words, but still. So but does that make you a dominant left? bottom? I mean, I don't know. Right, I think it's dependent. Right, then? <laughs> I think that. Uh, well, left is the dom side, yes. If you if okay. you're thinking about um, kink and leather and hinky coats and stuff, yes. So okay. left is the dominant side, right is the submissive side. Many if you're going note, that route, but that doesn't always, you know, count in every situation. Add to profile, prefer bottom left. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, so, in other words, I think we have our alignments right for this episode. Well, but I would have to be on the right then. Do I need to move people Oh, that's around? true. So okay. you and David would have to swap. Okay. Cool. Okay. Give me a sec. No, 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 <laughs> no. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, anyways, uh, Gary, tell us why uh, 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 Mr. Angelini Cook is here. Well, because we love him, that's why. Aww. True, we would have him for any reason. So, <laughs> but we are continuing our landscape of relationship series. Last month we talked about apologies, apologizing, and this month we're going to talk about forgiveness. So mm-hmm. we're going to get to something a little different. Um, and as we've said before with this series, there's uh, adjustments that can be made, you know, as you listen through the series about these aren't just intimate relationships. You could also use these with friendships and family and work in okay. some fashion. So that being the case. Uh, so, Ed, since last time we talked about apologies, um, we started to talk about the process of forgiveness and how that can relate to the apology process. So uh, I'd, I'm very curious to see hear and learn what you think now of um the forgiveness aspect of things yeah so uh so i have thoughts uh and i am uh really excited to talk about this so uh so i'm kind of glad where we stopped last time because um one of the resources that we were talking about the five languages of apologies request uh had requesting forgiveness as the last language or as the last language um and i disagree um i don't think that it's fair to request assume or expect somebody to forgive you as part of the apology process uh because the responsibility lies on the person hearing the apology whether or not they want to forgive the uh, the person, the situation. Um, and because at the end of the day, it isn't really about the other person. It's about them themselves. So, okay. um, Uh-oh. no, no, there I just need go. to think, I just need to process and think about sure. that. Cause what you're saying is apologies are all fine and dandy, but you're, I think you're saying that, uh, that forgiveness is up to the person receiving the apology and they determine for themselves whether or not they forgive. 
Exactly. Yeah. Like just because someone apologizes doesn't mean they're forgiven. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But and that kind of makes sense to me. Go ahead, Jeff. But if you're apologizing, you may want to also include the language to ask for it, even if you don't actually get it, get the forgiveness. So I, I mean, I hear that I do, mm-hmm. and I, I don't think that that's wrong, right? Like mm-hmm. requesting a forget. I don't, I don't think that's. I can see where that would be appropriate in the case of like you know you're making a formal heartfelt apology, but I'm kind of of the mindset that like I'm kind of like thinking that that's kind of overstepping your responsibilities there. Um, like, and you know, I, 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 where I think, and we'll talk about it, that like, you know, f- as far as forgiveness goes, right. Like, um, we don't want to like demand command or, um, uh, what was the other word? Um, demand command or force, uh, forgiveness. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, requesting forgiveness i don't think is wrong per se um but you know like can you say like hey can you forgive me you know like is this something that uh that you think you know but like i think an appropriate response to that is like you know i need time right like i don't think that that's something that i can answer Mm -hmm. i don't think that i don't think I really don't think that that's appropriate. Mm. I so the thing that came to mind is the whole for me when you're when you were talking was the whole concept of like here's my apology, you know, ABC, and then the person who's apologizing, you know, saying like or asking like like do you forgive me or can you forgive me or would you forgive me kind of thing like I've apologized, will you forgive me and I've had that happen and I agree with you that sometimes I need time. I need to process what you've said and done and real in the reality of a lot of things. I need to know that your apology was genuine and that's not going to always be just the word. That's going to be like whether you repeat the action that you're apologizing for or um, whether you continue to do said thing that caused the need for the apology to begin with because then i'm gonna i'm 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 not gonna you know i may not forgive you or i may not have forgiven you because i know for a fact that you're probably going to do this again yeah and um to ask for it without evidence that's the word i'm going to use to ask for the forgiveness without evidence of the apology being genuine i think i like you said i think i reserve the right to withhold my forgiveness can you make a note i remind me to find a quote okay that literally speaks to what you just said um <laughs> And it also talks about the fact of like kind of non apologies, like we talked about last time, and um, unapologies, like when when apologies don't happen, um, w- which is like you know we're talking about situations where an apology does happen, right? Like you know when do we forgive, whatever. But like we also have situations where an apology hasn't been made, and like they're not going to be made. And sometimes we get the message that we have to apologize to these people, these things, whatever, that have hurt us. And, like, do we? (laughs) You know? I'm I'm going to throw something in the chat because I think it's what you're talking about. But keep going. Um, So, but, so... In kind of while I was kind of looking at stuff like this made me think a lot about what forgiveness is. And, you know, as a therapist, I talk about what I'm going to talk about forgiveness. Um, 
is, <laughs> uh, which is a means of end, a means to end the resentment and anger felt towards another person, situation, or thing for an offense, flaw, or mistake. Mm. And what's really important is I don't think that the forgiveness that I'm going to be talking about is the forgiveness that other people are talking about when they think about forgiveness. And I think that like people conflate um, two definitions of, of forgiveness when um, even when they're talking to me and they're coming to me saying, I really need to, I feel like I really need to forgive this person for, you know, whatever. And I'm like, okay, so do it. You know, like, so let's, let's do this thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, but like, you know, it, something gets in the way because their idea about what forgiveness is, is something that they were taught as a child growing up, which is this idea that like forgiveness is like this great virtue. It's this highest self of love and, um, and it is like, you know, giving so much of yourself, right. Mm. Um, and loving this other person, um, and wrapping them up in this blanket of love. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, there are some situations I'm sorry, I'm not going to hold that other person in a blanket of love. <laughs> that is not going to be I the mean, end result. That's true. I'm, I'm sorry. I laugh, but there are certain things that I don't think, I don't think I could forgive someone for like ever. And uh, that's kind of, and that's what I want to talk about is like, I think that we can reach what I think is forgiveness or an idea of forgiveness mm -hmm. um, without forgiving. Mm. Interesting. Because I, you know, like I get what, like the whole, like, Forgiveness part in childhood, like, ooh, that takes me back. Because um, there was, that happened also often in, like, um, the church and everything else. Like, when you're growing up and you're in church, sometimes there are things that people are asked for forgiveness for. Um, and, my, like, when you're, when you're a child, it's not as big a deal, I would say. But as you become, you know, an adult... Um, I look back on some of the things we quote unquote, like the church quote unquote for gay people for, and, um, I'm sorry, but like, maybe we shouldn't have, <laughs> like, maybe we should have like not forgiven these people. And this is me sounding bad, but I just like, that's the thought of it. Like my thought is like, Again, there are things I think you need to be careful about forgiving people for um, because it's I don't want to say because they'll do it again, but it shows it it kind of shows a little bit of negative negative of your self or your community or what have you. Um, yeah, I just I'm. I'm curious about forgiveness, but not forgiving. That's, I'm very curious where you're going with this. So, Well, um, typically, when people are coming to me and they are saying, I really want to forgive my father, right? I really want to, um, I really want to forgive my family. I really want to give, I really want to forgive my friend, right? It's really eating me up. It's really causing me pain and everything. I don't think that they're saying that they want to forgive this person. They're saying they want to let go mm. of this, um, of this pain that they have. Um, they want to um, be rid of this anger, this bitterness, this, this pain. They, they want to let go and we don't have to forgive in order to let go. Right. So Brene Brown has this, um, we, you know, I love Brene and for, uh, and 
Um, and this is where I think that forgiveness, like the, the definition that I would operate from, conflates with this idea of letting go. She says that forgiveness is not forgetting or walking away from accountability or condoning a hurtful act. It's the process of taking back and healing our lives so we can truly live. So so in that kind of way, forgiveness is about us. It's not about the other person. Mm. So. Um, ooh. So the I think the important <laughs> thing is, like, I think the distinction about forgiveness is. Forgiveness is giving me the the proper ability and power to be authentically happy despite what what happened, like despite what the experience is, and it in no way absolves the quote unquote sin that took place. Right. And I found that quote that I was going to that I was going to tell you. And um, and so there's a psychologist um, and her name is Janice Abrams Spring. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. She also wrote this book, uh, this book called After the Affair, um, which is all about what happens after the affair. Mm. Um, and um, and she writes about forgiveness. Right. And that there are some things that like uh, that there is a cultural message that says that like we have to we have to be quick to forgive, right? But being quick to forgive can sometimes be have really negative consequences because then people can hold us to that and say, but you forgave them. Mm -hmm. And it's not so easy, right? Like sometimes yeah. like this journey isn't always linear. So like, you know, we have to we have to be very mindful about when we're ready to be rid of this or when we're ready to let go. So so she says that you don't restore your hum humanity when you forgive an unapologetic offender. He restores his humanity when he works to earn your forgiveness. There you go. That right there. <laughs> I see Gary. Is your mind working? <laughs> yes, but I'm trying to to balance it out so mm. ed are there two different kinds of forgiveness it's it, so not really it's kind of an all in how you define forgiveness right like okay. some people are going to define forgiveness as um Oh, where do I have it? Um, some people are going to define uh, forgiveness as um, you know, that really warm blanket of love for the other person and about getting to that really spiritual place of finding love for the other person. And that's what's called radical forgiveness. And um, and some studies show that like that kind of forgiveness is um, is really, you know, helpful. And some and some studies also show that like some people are better at that kind of forgiveness than other people are. Um, so like it's, that's also why it's really important to really ask, what is your definition of forgiveness? For me, it is about me. Um, uh, forgiveness for me is I'm willing to let go of the pain of the resentment of the anger that I'm carrying that you aren't. Um, like I don't want to, I don't want to drink poison anymore and expect you to die. So I want to live my life and wish you well, right? Because, like, you know, I'm not forgiving what happened, um, mm. um, but I have to I have to live my life. And right mm. now I'm not. And you are because you don't you don't even know that I'm really still angry. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sitting here so, thinking. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What I was just going to say is, I, I think it's multifaceted. Yeah, I, I think there's a distinction between like the, you giving forgiveness and you and you going through the process of forgiveness. Like 
because what Ed was just saying a moment ago, and I was like, where he, where I'm going to misquote it, but you were just like, you know, like I need to go on and living my life because you don't even know what you've done to like harm me or hurt me or whatever. And I'm like, well, that's not always true. The other person may very well know what they've done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why I was like, okay, so I think it's pretty multifaceted. It's not a black and white situation. It's not. It's not as pure as offender yeah. is forgiven and absolved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What a- but it's also not um, like Ed, you were saying earlier, you know, wrapping them in this, you know, radical love blanket or whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, and I didn't mean to sound disparaging about that, but I mean, you know, it's that everyone has that capability or that, that you know, yeah. that concept. I, it's funny because earlier when you were talking, so Damon, this might relate to you given your background. Like, I, I just have this memory come forward about how I think it's in like media but I think it also like com- I think it, it well it comes from spirituality. Is it there, there like this quote or something that I've heard where someone says, "Father, forgive them," like yeah, they don't Father, know. Father, forgive, they- forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. And I was thinking about that statement, and I was like hung up on a second for a moment, and I was like, "Wait, if God's omnipotent and God knows everything, why are you tell it God? God already knows. Like, like God's the well, one that chooses to forgive anyways." Well, like, I think. Yeah, the the context of the statement, um, <laughs> if I'm remembering correctly, and and I apologize, um, Bible study has not been a part of my life for several years now. Um, the context of this, it, this is these were his last words before he died on the cross, and yep. it was to forgive the people that basically killed him because they know not what they do. Now, having said that. As someone who was a Christian and knows all this stuff, I'm a Christian. Um, um, it's if you hear the story, like again, this is sort of the whole issue where I like sit there and I wonder, like, was this like life or was this just manipulation? Because the whole point of Christ, if you know the whole story, was that he was supposed to die for our sins. Like everyone, that's the one big thing. So like. He technically knows he's going to die. So, like, why is he asking God, who is him also? Spoiler. (laughs) To forgive them. Yeah. (laughs) Super complicated. (laughs) Yeah. To forgive them for what they did, but they needed to do it anyway, because that's the whole point of you being here. Like, like the like the whole like mind sits there and goes around this whole fucking thing. So, like, given this context of this this conversation that we're having, was that literally a forget? Yeah, like, well, like here's a, here's should a, God a, actually a, forgive well, let's, them? Let's <laughs> let's do a little bit of analysis on this. Is <laughs> you're saying that Jesus knew that his purpose in life was to eventually uh, die? Uh, it was just, basically, he was supposed to die to have God forgive as a, a symbol for God forgiving everybody for their transgressions or sins. Since yep. did Jesus actually know that was the case? Is the question because I don't think that in Jesus's life or anywhere in the uh, various books which describe it that they actually that Jesus actually knew that was what the end goal was but people before that before he was even born even knew of course i haven't studied the bible in a really 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 long time but if you so when it gets to the point gets to the point where (laughs) his job was to make sure that they are forgiven for by him by him dying so that's why he said forgive give them so that they would get the forgiveness and he was just making sure that that was happening i mean kind of like (laughs) dad okay i'm dying here no i'll be back in about three days but i'm i'm dying here uh make sure you forgive them okay just just a reminder (laughs) i can't really like speak much to this because i just realized i was like my only reference to this because i wasn't really brought up in faith is a musical written by andrew lloyd weber and tim rice and like, that's not probably the best yeah. way to get a theology lesson no. 
but uh, I got it from both sides. And, <laughs> and then then there's also Life of Brian, but that's another matter altogether. Anyways, oh. yeah. So so my point is is like, mm. <laughs> yeah. Continue. I think the reason that I was bringing it up was I thought it was ironic that the statement is being made of an omnipotent being because the omnipotent being would already know this. Like you don't need to say that. It requires not being said mm. because. But if he was an om- if Jesus was an this has to take place. Yeah, if Jesus well, was an omnipotent being, it, it was an omnipotent being, then how did he die? So that is the crux of religion. Like we're not I'm not gonna sit because we can I could get here and we can go on this all day. I ain't gonna do this. We're gonna move on. <laughs> no, but, I know, but like I just oh. I just thought it was like a it was a very odd yeah kind it's, of like like dog chasing tail like yeah and that's like it, there really is no i think so a, a good answer to that but anyways and to me that is emblematic of forgiveness like what ed was talking about earlier is that the person that makes the decision to forgive and provide the forgiveness is the one that like is not the one who needs to be forgiven it is the one who has the ability to do so like to forgive you know the the trespass or whatever um, but you know, like I think what you were saying earlier, Ed is like, you know, there is the like you do not get to demand, you can make a request, but that's as far as it goes. Like and you don't get you don't get to set a timetable, like yeah. maybe that's not how this works. Yeah, I think there is exactly. the idea, uh in re- in regards to the whole whole Jesus Christ thing, is uh it is that it's like he's uh, well Jesus may have said that it was like um uh, I'm sorry, son, but there's a reason why I had a mortal son created so that he could die on the cross and that be the example that indicated, yes, I forgave you your sins. Basically, I said, hey, by the way, you know all the stuff where he said this is a sin from those Ten Commandments? Yeah, um, I'm done. We're done. Don't worry about it. Do what you want to do. I'm leaving you alone. I'm backing off. You're on your own. Thanks for playing the game. Appreciate it. Oh. <laughs> I'm done. I got another world to work on. Bye. <laughs> but here's a symbol for the people saying, "Hey, <laughs> be go be go be gay. Be an adulterer. If you need a murder, great. Not advisable, okay. but okay. sure." Okay. Uh, I'll let you make that choice. You guys do the judgments. I'm I'm done. Okay. All right. So this to our getting audience, out of control. I'm really regretting that I brought this up to begin with because <laughs> none of us are really theology experts. So take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. So moving on. So um. So yeah. So one of the other things that when it comes with uh, forgiveness is that. Um, Studies have shown that, like, it has a lot of uh, health benefits. Um, Mm. I would, so, like, you know, like, some of the health benefits are, like, um, lowered stress, um, lower blood pressure, lower risk of heart attacks, um, and other, uh, you know, reduced mental health concerns such as depression and anxiety, um, which, I mean, I could, you know, that makes sense to me. Um, I can also kind of relate that to like the act of letting go of what you can't control. That is the most healing. Um, right. Um, yeah. like I'm you know, cause like, about, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm sitting here thinking, I think about it all the time and I think about the times you've forgiven or I've forgiven. And I do admit sometimes it does feel good to like, let go forgive what have you um as mentioned my usual issue is if i've forgiven you for xyz and you continue to do xyz then i think i have the i should have the ability to revoke said forgiveness i don't know if that's happening like and set boundaries yeah like refer to you have, you have, uh, I don't know whatever you episode that is. Have fuck me over for the last fucking time, bitch. Like we are not having this again. Clank clank. 
thou art in jail. Like <laughs> clang, clang, <laughs> clang with the trolley. <laughs> well, so I, I think, I mean, I, I don't think, uh, so if it's the same grievances, like the same trespass, the same, like, you know, whatever the issues are, the acts that have been done, I think, I don't think that you're retracting the previous forgiveness. It's that they haven't, they haven't changed behaviorally and therefore like, like while the past is the past and we've dealt with that, or you've dealt with that, we now have a new thing and you're not willing to forgive the new thing yeah. because it's a cycle. Like it's repeated and you're like, Oh no, 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 no. Like, no. and and then that's kind of just the, the end of that. Like, and then what I was thinking is unfortunately frozen popped into my head um, and it was like, you know, let them go. Just let them go. Let them go. Mm-hmm. Let them go into the unknown. Now you've got into the unknown. Is there a case, or maybe it's just, is, is there a difference of, um, of accepting apologies and forgiveness? Can you accept the apology and not actually forgive somebody? Or... Absolutely. It, is, is... Okay. Answer my question. I would say yes, because I, I think anybody could apologize to someone else or to a group of people, but whether or not forgiveness is provided is a whole other issue. Yeah, I, I mean, mean I, 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 I sorry, I was going to say, I think of it like this way, whether when we have a celebrity that missteps, does something wrong, although that hasn't happened recently in a couple of years, but there was a trend for quite a while where they were like, well, I didn't mean to do that. That wasn't my intent. I apologize. And then there was a whole lot of criticism, but sometimes the apology was like, I'm sorry you feel that way. Yeah. Bitch, nope, not an yep. apology. One of my <laughs> the worst, like, apologies. I mean, I know we talked about apologies already, but, like, to me, that is yes. one of the worst apologies ever. Is yes. I'm sorry you feel this way. Fuck you. Like, 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 point blank, period. If you say something to the effect of, I'm sorry you feel this way, Go back and listen to 604. We already, we went over that, but okay. <laughs> not that we can't bring it up again, but I'm just saying like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah I don't, that's why I don't want to rehash it. I just want to like, <laughs> I wasn't on that episode. So I think. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was, that was a, that's... that was a three way. Uh, hey. Uh, <laughs> no, but there was one thing that we said, you know, uh, uh, right, Ed? Like, um, I distinctly recall, like, we had that discussion about, like, you know... The Non-apologies. Non yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. really what that is. Because that's... There was the whole thing about how the person that's apologizing is putting the responsibility on the on the other person. Yep. And it was, it was all like, nope, sorry, not gonna happen that way. You know, you get a big red X, you do not get, you know, to collect $200 or get, you know, 15 minutes of fame. That's not how this works. No, 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 no. Yeah. But, Oh, <clears throat> favorite one. Uh, sorry. There's there's a there's a Family Guy episode where it's Mel Gibson apologizing, and it's not anything like an actual apology at all. So, <laughs> yeah, so, it's hilarious. Anyway, continue. So as far as like um you know like the process of uh, like forgiveness like within a relationship um I tagged a or I linked an article um in uh in the show notes um and they're you know they incorporated these seven steps that i'll kind of go through um but i mean i think are can be helpful um like so like write down three ways negative emotions have impacted or still impacting your your relationship um like you know three negative uh three negative emotions that you haven't yet processed like anger resentment fear you know whatever um like find a way to dislodge yourself from those um negative emotions whether through some form of activity um you know uh you know like what other what other kind of like coping skill that you can try to do um Taking uh, small steps to repair and let go of the grudges, right? Like whether that's through, uh, you know, healthy communication, um, uh, you know, couples therapy, um, you know, what are the ways that you're going to to move past this? Um, and then accept responsibility for your part in the in in the interaction, which we talked about a couple months ago. 
<laughs> don't let the wounds fester. So like one of the things that I like to say is, um, you know, like eat crow warm. So like, you know, like if something is bothering you, let the other person know quickly. Don't let things go, you know, because there's the um, what's that song? The One Republic song. Uh, it's too, too late, late to late. apologize. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and then accept. So like these are the ones that I I think are actually really important. So like focus on number six and seven. Accept that people do the best they can. Right. So like that's part of the generosity, the the G in braving. So like be generous. Right. Like you're in a relationship. Recognize that, like, you know, people are going to fuck up and like, you know, you're you're not perfect either. Right. So like people are, um, you know, like people are worthy. People are, are uh, pe- you know, people deserve um, mm-hmm. second chances. Right. Um, sometimes in my case, sometimes. third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, blah, 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 blah. True, sometimes true, true. it's a daily process. Um, and then the, the last one is think like a forgiving person. So like if the shoe is on the other foot, how would you want the other part? How would you want your partner to forgive you? Um, you know, like think about compassion, right? Like what would that Mm. be like? you? So, um, a lot of this is about empathy, right? Like having empathy for the other person can go a long way. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can you can find those in the in the the show notes. Um, so huh. what yeah. was I going to? So like that makes sense, right? Yeah, it does yeah. to me. Um, the whole concept of, especially in a relationship of, you know, forgiveness in a sense, you know, you're. G- you're probably oh wow oh yeah I'm gonna go ahead and say you're probably gonna empathize with the with your partner more than like a stranger or a celebrity or something along those lines you're gonna hopefully anyway um, you're going to empathize more with that person so you're gonna probably understand where they're coming from and their attempts to try and make it um, sincere AKR they are being genuine in regards to their apology so I think you're gonna be more willing um to put yourself in their shoes and understand that there's a need there's a desire to for to apologize and slash get to forgive the forgiveness um i also think um there i mean there again there are things sometimes that are difficult to you know forgive um especially in a relationship dynamic depending on what your dynamic is um and therein lies the can you forgive them and potentially give them an opportunity to to make amends mhm yeah i mean yeah. i, I mean, it's going to depend mostly on to me it's it's going to mostly depend on what the offense is and how they approach the apology and then um, the steps they take after that apology, or we take, I'll put we in there, after the apology to determine, like, the full-on forgiveness. Like I said, I don't think I could forgive immediately in that moment, depending on the nature of the um, offense. Exactly. Um so yeah, so like to kind of go back to what we were talking about before, apology should ne- apology should never be forced, demanded, or commanded. Um, like there's an example uh, where, oh. you know, like somebody's really angry. Um, you know, like say somebody comes into my office and uh, and their mom told them, "Listen, I don't understand why you're mad at your father for something that you know he did 20 years ago. Why can't you forgive him?" Mm. Bitch. Um. <laughs> right. That just like that, like yeah. that right there just makes sends a message that you are not listening. You do not care about mm-hmm. the pain of the person. Yeah. 
and I think that's something that I, a lot of people don't understand is there are things that are painful that you are maybe, maybe it's something that you are constantly reminded of, whether it's a physical scar or a, an emotional scar, I'll put it like that. You know, you're going to be reminded of it. You're going to have to deal with that. You're working on that pain and you, maybe you can't just let it go. As we've been saying, maybe you have to, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to, maybe you're going to have to sit in that resentment and yes, that's not always the healthiest thing, but neither is like you neither is forgiving them when you don't want to forgive them. I don't think that's healthy. I don't think forgiving someone just for the sake of forgiving them to 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 would be as healthy as as you mentioned, particularly letting something go and even if I let something go, like this trauma, I'll use that as a bigger sense of the word, um, does not necessarily mean I'm going to have to forgive that person. I could let, oh, oh, and there went my camera. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We're getting some pixelation here and there anyway, so maybe restarting it was a good thing. Okay. Um, I need to be careful about that. Anyway. Um Again, so like the the idea, the concept of of um, ooh, I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, I well, lost my train of thought. Yeah. I I think the important thing is is like like the person that give, that does the forgiving has all of the wow. I really don't like using this word. Uh, power. power. Yeah. Mm. Or I, control. I, control, yeah. control. I like control, control better. Control. Yeah. Of course you do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and that there's like you choose the level to which there is like forgiveness mm -hmm. lose everyone? Okay. well and also i think this is where the disparity between forgiveness and letting go comes in that like with that kind of message why can't you forgive them it's like i like it's not about forgiving them I've moved on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm choosing. I can't forgive them for what they did. I've moved on. I'm setting boundaries. I've made mm -hmm. a decision. I can't. They can't be in my life anymore mm -hmm. because of what has happened. But yeah. I've moved on. And that's. I think that's fair. Like that's one of the things I think people don't understand, especially family. Like this to me, like screams family. Like shit. Like. There's drama in families. We all know it. There's things that we, you know, have happened, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth and so on. Where, like, yeah, you don't talk to that 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 uncle, that aunt, that grandparent for whatever reason, or you've let that family go for because of the issues that you had to deal with. And maybe, like you said, you've moved past it for yourself, but that doesn't mean that that person is forgiven. They, if they, even if they've apologized, that still doesn't mean that they've, you know, they don't get to be forgiven. You know, it'll be up to me when I decide if I, to, you know, if I decide to do so. If I don't decide to do so, then I don't decide to do so. And they're just going to have to deal with it. Maybe they should let something go. Maybe they <laughs> should realize that you're not going to get a, you're not going to be forgiven for what you did. So you need to now figure out how what you need to do to move on from this. If you need something from me to move on, you might be left out in the cold because I ain't going to give it to you. Like if you need my forgiveness to move on, you're not going to get it if <laughs> yeah, I choose yeah. not to. <laughs> and mm -hmm. and. You know, that kind of you're, you're going to have to figure, like, again, you're going to have to figure out how to move on from it for on your own self because I've moved on. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's going to be up to you. Yeah. So, like, one of the other things that is that I thought was the 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 most interesting aspect uh, from Harriet Lerner's book on uh, why don't why doesn't he apologize is the concept that forgiveness isn't all or nothing mm. um, that we can forgive somebody 
2%, we can forgive somebody 95% or anywhere in between. It's up to you. And that is powerful. That you, that you And that also reinforces the fact that you have control as far as you want to forgive somebody. Yeah. So like the, the example that they gave was um, in the, the instance of a infidelity, um, you know, after working through it and everything, um, you know, they, the, the husband had asked, hey, do you, do you forgive me or have you forgiven me? And the wife thought about it for a while and she said 90%. And she said, I, for, I, for, I have forgiven you 90% uh, for the affair, but I cannot and will not forgive, uh, forgive you for the times when you had sex with her in our bed when I was away. I will not for I will not apologize. I will not forgive you for that. And yeah. like that makes a lot of sense to me. And that gives you autonomy, that gives you control, and that lets the other person know where you stand. Right. Because I think that, that example that you were just giving it, I was like, okay, like there's an example of some things are just not forgivable. And that that's fair. That or makes and I'm not saying I agree with that, but I understand it. Like, yeah, in the example, they're like, yeah, most of the way I forgive you, but you crossed a line that I don't think is forgivable. End of story. And yeah. it doesn't mean and it doesn't mean that I don't love you and it doesn't mean that I don't care about you. It's just I can't forgive this that one part of it. Yeah. And and that's fair. And that doesn't mean that that's going to not going to change. Right. Mm -hmm. I love that concept. I like the concept of 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 like dosage <laughs> of forgiveness, as it were, the idea of not necessarily forgiving the full thing and being uh, comfortable and OK with that. Um, yeah, like I'm sitting here like in my head and I'm processing because I'm remembering things. I'm like, yeah, you know, there's the whole. Like, I will forgive you, but I won't forget kind of process or concept. Um, and that to me in some ways is part of this like like percentage you know uh maybe 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 not anyway but yeah the my idea is that like yeah you will i've forgiven you up to this point i won't forget this thing or these things ever or i won't for, i won't forget the whole thing but these particular parts of it were unforgivable or this particular part of it was unforgivable so it's all going to be remembered i'll put it like that i may not forget all of it and i maybe have forgiven you for these things but i will not forget you forgive you for these things yeah, yeah. Mm. um so i you know i i think out of all of the things that I, that i read on this topic that was the thing that i was like i'm definitely taking that with me mm -hmm. um and then, you know, like, so one of my friends reminded that I don't forget this, and I can't believe that I almost did, um, but let's not forget forget self-forgiveness um, mm. or what I call self-compassion, because um, I think that oftentimes we are our own worst enemy and that we, um, we at oftentimes need forgiveness you know, just as much <laughs> oftentimes throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes you need to forgive yourself for things you have done. Um, even if it's hurt, not hurting anyone else but you. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. A point. That's a good point. Yeah. I think the one that comes up a lot is mistakes. Mm. Um, I talk a lot with people. Oh, I made a mistake. I'm a terrible person. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> That's an extreme reaction to a little, little thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I, mm, I was just gonna say, Ed. I think it's the, um, it's the size of the mistake mm -hmm. is what's important. I like, mean, true. Like. I forgot an appointment, I forgot a birthday, I burned the dinner, like, I mean, I think that that them, things are legitimately mistakes and they are smaller on scale, 
So I agree with you. Like that's kind of being dramatic or hyperbolic or whatever to, you know, to, you know, take those things and hold them up as like so grievous. Mm -hmm. But then there are other things that I think are far more important, like in, in scale and impact that can legitimately be a mistake yet still have incredibly severe consequences. Um, and that's, I mean, they're, they're, it's very complex, but I mean, there, there's a lot mm -hmm. of things to be like sorted out through that. So I, I don't know if I would say universally mistakes, you know, fall on the same level. I think that there's, there's lots of different things in between because, and, and again, and I've always kind of said this, like, I think intent is a piece of it and sometimes there isn't intent it's just ignorance yeah that's and part of, yeah and that and that's sort of important to a certain level i know not everyone agrees with that and yeah, that's so. fine i have to be okay with that like i have to be okay with the fact that i'm ignorant about something and someone does not forgive me for being ignorant yeah because so they feel he, that I should have known better no matter what. And that's just their, that's their, that's their perception. That's their opinion, their viewpoint, how they feel. So it's funny that you mentioned that to go back to our Jesus comments. Um, <laughs> the, one of the definitions of forgive them for they know not what they do. Or one of the meanings is that it is don't be angry at someone for something bad. If they are ignorant and don't know what they are doing is wrong. Or if they don't know a better way to do something. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, called the that's, teaching moment. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's sort of the thing. Like, right. if Learning they, moment or something. you know, if like, and if for forgiveness are our mistake moment, as we're talk, kind of talking about it, if you weren't aware of there being an issue, you know, you, you can't necessarily, you don't, you don't know, you don't know. So you don't know you made a problem. So as a, like a broader example, um you make a post about something without any kind of quote unquote warnings you know you post a a potentially triggering you know post whether it's words or just like an image or something and you don't realize that it's potentially triggering to someone you didn't know we're right. not sure you knew you know and then someone comes up to you and, and mentions that this was an issue for me. Well, I would record, you know, I would prop, you know, apologize. And if necessary, take the post down or maybe re edit it with a content warning or trigger warning so that people understand that before you get go any further, excuse me, this is potentially problematic. And if you don't wish to see it, you may want to move on or move back. <laughs> Right. And, and I agree with you, Damon, because there's something to be said for I really believe in the this quote. And I want to I think it's my Angelou that makes reference to like when you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know. You like I said this in training all the time, you don't know what you don't know. Full stop. Like mm -hmm. I can't hold you accountable to things like this is my biggest pet peeve when it comes to for to instructional like facilitation and testing and assessments like gauging retention when i hold you accountable to something that was never explained to you or covered that's like the biggest grievance in the world when it comes to instruction it's like you cannot like i'm sorry like it's an impassable thing for me you can't hold yeah. someone accountable to something that they were never taught never they covered never knew. yeah right yeah once they now, know it yeah. that's a whole other issue and like how many times how many opportunities, how many chances, like that, those all become factors about that, mm -hmm. you know, and I realize it becomes complex, but that's another item. Like I was listening to um, some podcasts recently and what was interesting was this concept of like contextual culture and it really kind of had to do around race in America and our historical background and privilege. And it was really interesting because I listened to, um, uh, Ed, do you know who Esther Perel is? Yes. So she has a couple podcasts and I listen to them and she has a, a newer series that she started recently that I just listened to. Um, and I'm blanking on it, uh, called how's work. And so it's about counseling or providing insights, like in kind of in a concept of counseling and 
in work dynamics, which is really interesting because it's not about romantic relationships. So it's a little different. But this most recent episode I listened to this morning was about this context about how there were these two people that were kind of married to each other, quote unquote, like they referred to each other as like work wife, work husband thing. Mm -hmm. And then that there was a divorce, quote unquote, and this whole thing that changed and race is a part of it. And like there's all this stuff. And it was really intriguing to listen to. And it got me thinking about how there are most likely people being held accountable to things that they know not that they are that they should be held accountable to mm -hmm. until someone talks to them. So, you know, and, and that was a key to me. And I sometimes think about that, you know, and I recognize that there are some people who that's still unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of me that says, well, then that's about you. That's not really about me. Like if you're not, if you're not recognizing my ignorance and accepting that and like, you know, basically making a statement along the lines of there's no excuse. Mm. Okay. Like that, but yeah. that's your viewpoint. Yeah. And I'm not going to overcome that. And yet that is also not reality. Yeah. Like for it's example, just... you're in a class. And there's a you miss a class because you were sick or ill, you know, or you know, out of the country, whatever. If you don't go back and try to get that information, and then it shows up on a test, that's not ignorance in my mind. Like you didn't, there was the information was made available to you. You just chose not to follow up through it for one reason or another. Now, if you get a test. Like you've gone through the whole class or even missed a few classes and you get to a test and there's something that nobody knows mm -hmm. like that's on this test, then that's the ignorance. No, yes, you didn't know about it. Why is this on the test? And you were never taught about it and you didn't No one ever said anything or said anything about it. So why is this suddenly on the test? So the teacher should not hold you accountable for knowing that because they never taught it to begin with. Right. I think it's interesting your example, Damon, because I was thinking about this in the workplace. There's a little bit of a of a, of a caveat what I give to that. Like, what are the expectations? Like, normally mm -hmm. when you start a classroom instruction of any kind, there's a syllabus of some sort. Like, there's a and a you know an agenda. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, something mm -hmm. is provided that tells you this is the context of what we're going to cover. Here are the expectations. Work does not always necessarily do that, and it's one of my biggest yeah. pet peeves that like someone has an absence. And then they come back and work does not make an effort to catch them up from when they left. Ma'am, mama. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that thinking that you would relate, but watching your reaction, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot what David does for a living. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Literally, literally on furlough for like three months because of, you know, COVID. And coming back into work, oh, by the way, um, all these people are gone. Um, and, oh, you get, to, you get to learn all these new things because these people are gone. Um, and um, you need to kind of do it quickly. And, oh, by the way, there's this other part of it that we were doing that now you need to do. And it's like, okay. Like, and there's a matter of, like, trying to catch up as well as learning new things as well as, um, <laughs> like, just mentally preparing for stuff and trying to get the, the having the mental capacity and also dealing with like, hey, you know, there's a bunch of people that are no longer with the company because, yeah, we had to downsize a lot, like a lot, a lot. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, and I just went through this recently. I was describing it um, with a local community-based organization, I was talking to them, who has been aware that I've been in this position, but I, I mentioned to them the, the historical timeline. I'm like, my position was vacant for almost seven months. Mm -hmm. And the person goes, really? And I was like, yes. I'm like, and then I came in and I was barely here two full months. And then Miss okay. Corona arrived on the scene and changed everything. And I worked on that for nine months, 10 months. So... Yes. Like I'm just now in the summer, like I've been at this job a year and a half plus now. 
and I'm just getting around to things I should have been doing more than a year ago, probably. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, reaching out to these CBOs and talking to them and stuff. And it was really interesting because do you know what happened when I started? Nobody caught me up on the seven months I was gone. Like that, sorry, that the position wasn't filled. Like nobody contextually did anything. There was just a lot of presuming that I would figure it out as I go. Well, guess what, bitches? I'm figuring it out as I go and I'm making mistakes and I'm not the best at it. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, well, <laughs> but, you know, I hope they forgave you for all of that. Well, I mean, you know, I'm just. Or maybe I, I they apologized I'm... for putting you through that. Mm, no, like the person that the person that needs to do the apologizing. First of all, they have to apologize. They, wait, sorry. They have to have an awareness that they need to apologize. And then second of all, they ain't going to get an apology because it's systemic. It's an issue. I'm not here to bitch about what work. That being said. <laughs> Ed, back to you. <laughs> now, now we're going to well, bring it back around to, to, to the topic. Well, I mean, I just, you know, um, just to like, you know, finalize all this, um, you know, the, the, the final thoughts that I think are, you know, really important that I don't think that um, I think like if uh, if this was like, you know, a therapy session, I would think that it's important to let people know that you don't need to forgive a person who has hurt you in order to free yourself from the pain of negative emotions. Um, that you can just deal with the negative emotions and move on. <laughs> you don't have to necessarily necessarily forgive them. And then it's no one else's job to tell you how to forgive or tell you to forgive or even not to. Mm. That part's important. Well, and, and what I find interesting about that, I, Ed, is I think what is really important about it is that I think we, some of us, let me let me not make broad generalizations. Some of us have been taught in our like immediate bubble, like family dynamic relationship about forgiving, and this kind of is counter to that. It's a it's a contradiction. But I think the distinction is you're an adult. I'm presuming you're listening to this podcast and you are an adult. And well, (laughs) yeah, especially some of the things we discussed today. Um, (laughs) The important thing is that as an adult, you get to contextualize and handle things in your own way. Mm -hmm. So there is a big distinction between like how you may have been told to do something Versus when you're an adult, like here's, here's, here's the big one that comes to mind. If you are a victim of trauma as a, as a youth, you may have been informed or told to forgive and to move on or to let go. But the reality is if that wasn't compatible for you and you had to process and go through things and deal with stuff, so be it, do it as an adult And I think that sometimes where conflict comes, especially because like your earlier example, like that happened 20 years ago. Why can't you just forgive? It's like, no, 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 no. That's not how this works. Like you don't get to dictate that. Like that might've worked when I was a child, like, and I didn't know any better. And maybe you didn't have the skills and you didn't know any better, but mama, like it's 2021, whole different like timeframe now. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it's really important to, to say that who, who decides the forgiving is no one gets to call that out except you, period. Yep. Mm-hmm. I would assume you'd at least be able to get, like, you could ask somebody, should I forgive somebody for this and get their reasoning behind it? But in the end, you're still the one that's providing that forgiveness. Yeah. yeah you but you can, can always get guidance. advice. Yeah, you right. can seek guidance. You can seek advice. Yeah. You could talk to a therapist if you have one, or even if you, you know, or you can talk to Ed or be a friend. You know, some kind of thing, you know, like that, you know, you can do that. Granted, don't, you know, if you're, if you're going to talk to Ed, you know, yeah, you might want to set up appointment and, and yeah, make sure yeah. that you, your payments in order, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He is a exactly. professional. He deserves to be paid <laughs> exactly. for, for his professional like, work. So that's, is... the, that's the, so that's the big thing y'all. Okay. Again, if you're asking professional advice for someone, like, like who's a, who's like, a professional in the field. A professional in the field, like, like expect to pay. Like, I, even if, even if expect it's like, <laughs> like, I don't even want to say expect a bill, but like, 
fucking like do something else. Like, cause you know, we talk about it, we've talked about it all the time, like IT and lawyers and, and what have you, and you're asking for stuff and you're you know, kind of think like you're 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 like you're asking for their professional opinion on something. Do something. Like whether it's it's like maybe having it over dinner that you pay for kind of thing, or maybe actually paying them their rate. Like maybe you should do, anyway. Sorry, I'm I'm just I'm I'm a big we're, we're, fan we're of trying, like we're, we're, we're trying, <laughs> like if you have a friend who's a lawyer, I would ask them for legal advice. Yeah, or ask them for legal advice, or or la- ask them like. Pay limited legal advice like hey i need to do this do you know where i should go for it their money. Yeah. right i think right. david's point is david's david's point is if they are a pro because they are what professional then compensate them yeah that's that's how that goes yeah mm-hmm. yeah so yeah absolutely um, and be sure to ask them how they went compensated <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to touch wow. that one <laughs> I'm just saying. A yeah, no, no, more. yeah, no sexual favors here. Yes, exactly. Sometimes people just. I was saying sexual favors. Yeah, those those two need to be. You didn't um, say it. Impl- implications were there. In my nope, mind, nope, went there. Nope, nope. In my I was, mind, I was thinking a really nice dinner. You might consider that compensation. That is not necessarily agreeable as compensation. Perhaps you should have a discussion and get consent on what is agreeable for compensation. That's what that is. None of us are wearing consent to my four place shirts. I know, but that's okay. (laughs) But uh, I I forgive you for for that. Oh, uh, uh, my God. Um, And cut. I hope, I hope that you will forgive me. That is your choice. But uh, I think this is probably about the end. Anything else? Any final thoughts? Okay, cool. <laughs> I got to go ahead to end the show from Gary. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and now Gary's joking. But uh, Edward, do, do, do you think there? Do you think we got everything covered here? Are we? Are we clear? I want to make sure there's no final thoughts here before we go. No, I I, I think we are good. Yeah. All right. Well, of course we are. There are plenty of ways to contact us, you know. <laughs> wow. You can pop over to our website where you find uh, the, our podcast as well as the uh, COL Drag Race podcast, which uh, 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 I'm make sure I'm pointing in the right direction. Uh, these two schmucks do uh, each week. Um, over at CubsOutLoud.com. If you would like to shoot us an email, you can do it at uh, CubsOutLoud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail, uh, sexy or otherwise, at 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can follow us on various social media outlets on Facebook, Twitter, t- and uh, U- YouTube. Uh, Tumblr's still on there for some reason. I was taking that off, but that's okay. Uh, at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL, you can join our entourage chat at tonyroll.com slash telegram dash col, where you can find things such a meme as a meme I posted earlier today, uh, which I found very funny, which I stole from my uh, Bear Gamers uh, Discord that I'm a part of. Uh, you can also uh, find out when we're planning on recording these shows by checking out our calendar at tinyurlcom slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements and uh, uh, stuff, such as uh, various different Cubs Out Loud shirts with the logos or things such as this Proud Out Loud shirt, which, well, mine is actually kind of fading. I don't know why. Uh, Maybe it was because I found it under a pile of stuff over in the corner. I was not taking care of it. Uh, but that's at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And of course, remember, it's zazzle.co.uk, etc. for your local place if you're not in the United States. Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or just send us some cash at people.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on various uh, 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 podcast directories such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Audible, Amazon, and Spotify. 
can find me anywhere on the internet as box at box puppy box cub box something other or win gem w-y-n-d-g-e-m on twitch uh where uh i'm currently obsessed is obsessively playing final fantasy 14 because i realized i wanted to turn something in and i didn't want to waste poetics so i need to get to a point where i can actually spend them for something so i literally did six seven hours of dreaming uh earlier today and we'll probably do that a little bit later this evening after we record this show and then tomorrow or something it's but it's only temporary until i can spend these poetics <laughs> anyways here you are. or demon uh, if, whoever's if next you to, <laughs> if you wish to get in touch with me you can find me at theater cup seven nine I guess I should probably start spelling that because it's not what you think. Um, T H E A T R E Cub seven nine at uh, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The, um, Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabra73. Um, my not safe for work Twitter handle is Gabra73XXX. Mr. Edward, as our guest, if people would like to get in touch with you, how would they do so? Well, you can find me on Facebook. I'm there as Edward AC. Um, you can go to my website, um, eactherapy.com. Um, I uh, also have a TikTok, Unicub79. Um, also on Instagram, I'm Unicub underscore sex brain wizard. And if you want to do the not safe for work Twitter stuff, it's Jeep Daddy3. Um, uh, just, you know, send me a message. Let me know who you are. I don't need clients or family on there. <laughs> hey, I find you on uh, the Cups Out Loud podcast. I want to see what naughty stuff they they have. Anyways, with that, uh, let me do this and then this and then this and uh, that. There we go. And with that, uh, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs>